Welcome to the Biotech Startups Podcast by Exceda. Join us as we speak with first-time founders, experienced scientists, serial entrepreneurs, and biotech investors about the challenges and triumphs of running a biotech startup. Gain actionable insight into navigating the life sciences industry in each episode as we explore the business of science from pre-seed to IPO with your host, John Chi. The purpose of the Biotech Startups podcast is to provide general insight into the ever-changing world of life sciences through the experience of a variety of guests. The use of information on this podcast or materials linked from this podcast are at the user's own risk. The views expressed by guests and any employee of Exceda on the podcast are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Exceda or content sponsors. Any appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement or recommendation of any product, service or entity referenced in the podcast by Exceda or by its guests. In our last episode, we spoke with James Evans about his time at MIT's Whitehead Institute, his journey towards entrepreneurship, and how he created the unique work culture at Fena Vista. If you missed it, be sure to go back and give it a listen. Today, we're excited to chat with James about solving recurring problems in a startup, the difference between being bootstrapped versus finding venture funding, how to make clients feel secure in your business, the importance of being scrappy, and why adapting and having backup plans is critical. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. You need a lab. It sounds like you found your you, you found the hoods yeah. for you know five hundred bucks, which just sounds like a steal. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. How did you find your first lab space? Like how yeah. how did that come about? No, that was a good. That's a good story too. Yeah, we um so you know here in uh, in San Diego, there's there's a J Labs, um, which was uh which was an, at least a, seemed like an option, and um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know that we would have been allowed to go in j labs but we certainly looked at it as, as an option and um you know it was, it, it was relatively expensive and you know um wasn't a great fit for for our needs because you know the one thing that we needed lots of was tissue culture and that was at a premium within j labs and we're like well that's really the only thing we need um and so you know we kind of looked at the the cost of signing a one-year lease um at, at the at the business park that we're in um, now, which is uh, Cornerstone Court, um, you know, it was it was it was more cost. You know, it's more of a commitment. Like the commitment at J Labs was shorter, but like from a dollars perspective, it was more expensive than signing a one year lease. So we're like, well, let, let's go both boots in, sign up for a year, and you know, we can cover the cost. And let's just see if we can um, see if we can uh, you know generate some business during that during that year and um and then we also so we did that as far as lab space and then you know like i said we found those hoods which was you know a, a fun adventure but there was also a really great like um non-profit that we used that um uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's going anymore but it was uh, they would have this um like used equipment that they would get donated donations from from big companies and you know we bought like a centrifuge or, or, you know just a bunch of like um you know generic lab equipment for you know a couple thousand dollars or something we you know had all the basics so that was that was really really great too and we've tried to sort of you know hand those um that equipment down to companies that have started since and you know we've replaced things and we're like well this still works so somebody could do something with that so we've tried to sort of you know um, awesome. you know sort of hand that down and, and things like that and then um yeah i mean one of the key sort of I, I think for us also like being a service provider we wanted to make sure that clients knew we were like you know that this wasn't just something we were going to do for a few months and then get real jobs or something mm -hmm. so you know having real sort of brick and mortar um sort of lab space you know kind of really try to convey that um the fact that we plan to be around for a long time and uh so, but yeah, it was, it was signing that first lease was uh, nerve wracking. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's a big commitment. And I, I love hearing this story because, you know, I think there's, especially nowadays, there's almost over, it almost like feels like dogma and like, you must run a company like this, fund it like yeah. this. And it's kind of like this, like kind of. Yeah. one step after the other that's like predetermined it's kind of like run the playbook 
But, mm. you know, what I'm hearing is like very much, you know, a kind of like blazing your own path and it, mm. and it works. And it's sometimes. like, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. fast forward yeah. like a decade later, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I yeah. think that's something to be yeah. proud of. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, it is, I, I love to hear that there are, you know, you can, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure um, yeah. you know, in, in the world. I mean, I think that's, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I was, oh, I went for a walk before this and I, I, I was talking to my wife. She, she works from home a lot too. And uh, I was like, oh God, I just listened to these other podcasts. Those guys are rock stars. <laughs> I was like, I go, I don't know why I'm, I, I, I go, I guess I'm scrappy. And she's like, yeah, you're totally scrappy. And like, you know, you're, you're problem solvy. And I, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's really like, I mean, that, I, I think that's what, you know, what, what Jake was saying, like, you know, with his, his growing up in, in Guatemala and, and uh, you know, having a plan A, B, C, D and E and, 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 you know, going back to sort of, you know, when we started the company and, and not really having like a plan so much as a strategy you know, as, as much as like, okay, well, if something comes, we will do our best to sort of take advantage of it. And I think that's really, you know, that that's really a hallmark of like entrepreneurship, I think is just like, you know, you, 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 you I mean, I have up on my wall here, which is like, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. You know, is is you know you you, yeah. you you can plan as much as you like, but you know at the end of the day, nothing's going to go the way you think. So just you know adapt as it comes at you. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely a challenging ride. Yeah, and that's amazing because I actually I I say that on my on our morning meetings sometimes um, to the yeah, team yeah. internally because it's exactly that. And I think yeah. you know being light on your feet. And just being able mm -hmm. to kind of adjust with what comes is super yeah. critical, like super critical. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think, you know, even with, you know, with outside investors, you know, they want to, they want to know that you're quick on your feet too. And I think it, yeah. it probably, you know, is, is probably better to just like, you know, kind of admit that like, you know, we're some of the things we don't know and we're going to have to yeah. figure it out on the fly because like it, if you have it all figured out, you know, and you presented it as, as such, um, you know, yeah. th they're going to, you know, they'll smell it. as like, they'll sniff it out and they'll, yeah, yeah. Like, do you really have it figured out? Right. I mean, it's like, it's like this year, right. I mean, like, you know, I mean, everybody's been kind of caught out by, uh, you know, disruption in the industry and, and, you know, the so credit, um, you know, challenges that people are having and yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been, it's been hard. It's been a, it's been a hard few years, you know, every year there's been something, something a new challenge you know with yep. the pandemic and then supply chain issues and the labor shortages and then yep. this year's thing and um yeah it's it's probably it's been a really challenging year and um you know i'm very you know great gra grateful that we're, we're you know finavista is still you know growing and um you know getting good uh you know got great clients and, and good repeat business and stuff and, and, and growing our team and everything but uh but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like an ongoing new challenge. And you, know, you just wonder what next year is going to be like. But, uh, yeah. It's nice, nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy growth year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Those, yeah. And, you know, I, I think it, it, I'm sure it's invaluable to have, you've like built the muscle early days on being efficient, like keeping, like keeping the lights on without, you know, mm -hmm. outside investors is no small feat. Yeah. And I think that's a lesson that anyone can, you know, find value in. It's just like, yeah. you know, treating, well, treating the dollar as such. Yeah. I mean, it really, I mean, you know, I, I can't take full credit for, it. I mean, it, it's really like the, the team in the lab, especially um, obviously the commercial folks too, but in the lab, especially like, you know, doing more with less and, and, um, you know, really aligning on what the, you know, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly goals are like, okay, what are we going to get? What do we have to get done today? Who's doing what? How, you know, who, you know, no one's sitting around, uh, you know, and just sort of making sure. So there's a lot of, um, you know, th there's a lot of things that are just, I'm not, I'm not part of anymore that, that just, you know, the, the guys here, Tony and, and Chris in the lab, you know, uh, really, um, you know, make sure there's, there's really good communication and coordination amongst the team as, as far as priorities go and 
making sure the quality of, of work is, is always there. And um, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, that if that's not happening, it doesn't matter what I say, you know, I can say yeah. be more efficient, spend less money. Yeah. It's not going to happen unless you got buy-in from the team. And, and you know, we, we're, we're really lucky to have um, high quality folks uh, working for us. Totally. And as you you know, as we're kind of like looking back on like kind of like the past decade, were there, you know, for, for the listeners out there kind of like, you know, kind of, I got, if, if we're going to think about the Fino Vista journey as I kind of like divide it into eras, were there kind of like yeah. any key takeaways of like specific eras of Fino Vista and kind of what, yeah. how, how, how did you problem solve that? And, you know, perhaps someone else could, you know, find value yeah. in, in, in how you, how you did that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely, I think, I think there was definitely an era where, you know, pre sort of professional business development. So like getting, getting professional business development involved was, um, you know, that was an inflection point where we started to, you know, sort of know how to do sales more than kind of just learning what, learning what you've learned as a, as a, as a, as a customer, but, you know, knowing, you know, it's a, it's a real, it's a real skill, you know, to be a professional salesperson and BD and, and marketing and all that. And, um, you know, so, so bringing, bringing that capability in house after like four years or so on, like that was, that kind of really helped us, um, professionalize that aspect of the business. I would say after that, you know, the sort of the, third phase of, of Fina Vista has really been um yeah we, we kind of coincided with the uh, taking on outside investment and really looking at um sort of operationalizing or industrializing making making the business more scalable and and you know getting handles on key metrics for productivity and success and making sure that you know you aren't doing things that are losing money or if, if you are like fixing them and you know just you know because early on in the business it's like just just do stuff we'll pay the bill just do stuff yeah just you know just 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 don't don't think just do kind of thing and and then you know now it's you know the the sort of the stakes are a lot higher and uh you know, it, it's more about sort of creating efficiencies and and priorities and things like that. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the three the three stages. So, sort of initial startup scrappiness, do anything, but just do something. To then kind of a more sort of professional, kind of having professional help on on key key parts of the business, and then you know this third phase of of sort of scaling. Totally and. I'm super curious, like, you know, the, I'm always curious about like the sales and marketing efforts. And I know you work mm -hmm. with, you know, large institutions and also mm -hmm. smaller folks as well. And I guess I, I yeah. my question is like two prong, like what, you know, and, and it's, you know, early days, it was like, you know, almost like door to door sales, you know, kind of yeah. the, the early days and what yeah. kind of what, and you, you know, you don't have to disclose the full secret sauce here, but uh -huh. so what is your kind of like for anyone who's looking to secure new business with big folks or small folks, are there like yeah. tips and tricks for anyone, um, you know, looking to do that? And I wish I had the secret sauce. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, it is still like knocking on doors. I mean, um, there are, you know, there are tools, um, and, and there are, um, agencies you can use, but it's a mixed bag and, and, I think the hard, the hardest thing is, is, you know, and it sounds contrived a little bit, but it, if you find something that works great, it's not going to work. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Get a backup plan. Cause it's probably going to stop working in, you know, in three to six months. So you always got to be, you know, having a multifaceted approach and, and, you know, like, I mean, did you imagine you'd be doing podcasts, no. in, you know, three or four I, years ago, right? I, right? I actually yeah. pushed back against it. Um, I, yeah. I was, I had my arm twisted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's great. I mean, a lot of companies are doing it and it's a great way to kind of like, you know, showcase, you know, that you're involved in this area and, you know, your approach on things. It's, uh, but yeah, it's, so it's, so it's, it's constantly evolving and, you know, whereas like, you know, email drip campaigns might've been a thing that worked, you know, last year people's, you know, filters evolved to it and they stopped working. So you're, 
you know, back on the LinkedIn, you know, cold calls and phone calls. And, you know, now, you know, the world is kind of slowly opening up and you know, people are getting more um, amenable to in-person meetings and like lunch and learns and, you know, coffee, sponsoring coffee kind of socials and things like that or via social. So, yeah, it's just, it's uh, do all the things. Yeah. And I, I keep thinking about skateboarding. Like I, I keep going back yeah. to that. Like that's good. It's yeah, we'll it's like about again, that. you just try and you try and you try yeah. and you yeah. try until you land it. And then you move yeah. on from a kickflip and you try to do, you know, a heel flip. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know yeah, 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 and then you exactly. have to learn something new. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just com- yeah, yeah. continue to like level it up and level it up as best yeah. as you can. Um yeah. and once you've secured these clients, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I think the for for founders who are starting off you know like they they may not know that like working with a small business is very different than working with a big business which is also very different than the government what has your experience been working with di- a diverse clientele you know maybe and maybe let's start with like the big folks yeah i mean you know even well, so big folks versus small folks big folks take forever to get all the paperwork done and so, you know, if you're if you're just starting to have a conversation with a big pharma client, yeah, you might not see any money for six months. You know, it, it, it might take that long. Like working through some of the, you know, the um, marketplaces can sometimes, um, you know, uh, speed that up. So like Science Exchange and Scientist.com, um, those are those are both great resources that we, we use, and those can those can speed things up, but. Um, you know, and then big companies, you know, big pharma companies can can vary, you know, within within that group. You know, some are some better and faster than others. I think, you know, small companies tend to be faster, but I, I'd say the biggest difference is kind of the maturity in, in, between big companies and small companies. Is big companies they tend to the people that there are, are, are usually um, more experience at working with with service providers and um, kind of know the process and and the dance and what's reasonable to ask for and what's considered mission creep and what's unreasonable and the kind of just the professionalism and some sometimes it's not not all but like you know some of the smaller companies and of course small companies range from one or two people to you know three hundred people or something so there's yeah. a big big range of but you know there there are definitely more instances in, with small companies where, uh, particularly if the companies come from, you know, especially right now, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, AI companies who maybe don't understand, you know, when you ask somebody to just replate the cells or just, <laughs> hey, are you, you're doing the exper- you're, you're doing the experiment today. Can I change all the conditions? You're like, <laughs> no, you know, that's not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. So just, a, you know, so like, um, you know, the, the, and your part of it is, 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 you know, on us too. You got to make sure you set expectations and, you know, learning, learn, you know, this is just a learning process for us, right? Learning the different types of clients that you work with and what they're, you know, what they come to the table with as far as their experiences and, and sort of making sure that they kind of know how, how things are going to go. But, um, but yeah, with, with, with bigger companies, they tend to, be very sort of they they know what they're doing and uh, yeah. it's, a, it's usually smoother sailing though slower. Yeah, so. totally. And do you you know have you? I know when for my I had a, a kind of scar tissue brought uh, built up from this, but uh, yeah, the dance with government labs and like going through like oh, yeah. the procurement. Do you have do you have any experience with that or tips and tricks on that? <clears throat> uh only only from past past lives it, it can be it's like you know big company on steroids so even even worse yeah. and even slower and even more bureaucracy um I mean, we've had some grants um but um you know that that's 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 not so bad because it tends to be sort of more creative work but um yeah we we don't do a lot at the university we don't do a lot of government contracts right now but uh you know it might change but yeah but my past experience would would kind of you know pre pre-warn me that uh you know, it tends to be a lot of paperwork and very slow. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it can be, it can be, um, you know, meaty, decent sized projects. So it can be worth it. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, just kind of looking forward now, we've kind of done a retrospective. Mm-hmm. What are the goals for Fina Vista in the next year or two? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, 
Yeah, right now, so we are scaling our revenue. Um, we're uh, launching some new, um, some new off-the-shelf services that are pretty, uh, pretty exciting in the areas of uh, um, cell and gene therapy. So some um, new services that really um, support AAV uptake into different human um, cell types. Some functional functional assays. So that this is all sort of stuff that's going to launch in the next uh, sort of six months. So, um, but then really um, we're we're tackling some um, uh, some uh, toxicology um, areas as well using cell painting, which is which is pretty exciting right now. And then um, yeah, we're you know continued continue to grow. Probably another. Um, series of uh, uh fundraising in the next year or so um which would en- en- enable us to um develop some uh essentially like knowledge management um platforms that we're we're looking at so um you know we have we have really um you know our measurement technology imaging is, is really rich in data and uh and you know being able to measure um you know abundance in space and time and different cell types and, 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 and locations um, within, uh, within cultures. So it can be, um, and then of course you've got the disease model. So it's a really um, a sort of rich environment to model biology. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an area where we're looking to explore in terms of um, capturing that information with some of our um, um, you know, AI tools that we have. That I'm so excited. I, got, I just got pumped up just hearing about what's yeah. on, the, on the roadmap. Um, that's yeah. so cool. And I, I, you know, and thank you for your time, James. And I, nice. I really appreciate yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's been great. Yeah, and I just have two closing questions. I, I like to round things uh-huh. off with. Um, would you like to give any shout outs to anyone who's supported you? You know, throughout your career. Oh, I know we touched on some. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's there been, I mean, there've been like I mentioned. I think uh, you know, Alan and, and Pam back in grad school really uh, supported me and everybody in, in the lab back then. Um, you know, obviously uh, at, at, in Paul's lab, um, you know, Paul in particular, and then you know, I worked with a um, uh, really talented um, uh, postdoc there, Ivan Correa, who uh, really supported me in terms of uh, getting to know my way around MIT and Whitehead. And obviously, Sanjoy really uh, has done a yeah did a great job of equipping me with uh, plenty of caffeine back in the day. <laughs> he he was always he was always uh, so Sanjoy you know was always a English gentleman. He would be like you know dressed in you know a suit and would wear a hat and you know would look like very dapper. And I was always like kind of skate punky and kind of really disheveled and different color hair and things like that. And we would, we would always, he would always buy me coffee. So I, I definitely still owe Sanjoy uh, several thousand gallons of, of coffee, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's been, uh, you know, and then just ongoing. I mean, especially right now there's, there's just, I mean, you know, the advisors that we have at Fina Vista who just, you know, are just, are, you know, really experienced and, and give us great advice on sort of, you know, dealing with the, uh, you know the, the stuff we're learning on the go so yeah it's just so many people that have that have helped along the way yeah i i i always think about this and how you know how how critical it is to to have a kind of a a team and a, mm-hmm. you know and and the i'm always so grateful for the generosity of these people like cuz you know early days they don't have to like you know they didn't yeah. have to take that meeting with you to you yeah. know <laughs> um but they did um yeah and, well, yeah. even in that, and, and you know, even more shocking is is the people who believe in you and join your company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, you know, take a job with you, and I believe that we can make this work. And yeah, that's always super humbling. Is is you know, and especially it's easy when it's things are going well, but when things are, are tough, you know, and it, it's challenging and, you know, people stick by you and, 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 you know, work extra hard to, to make it happen. It's, uh, you know, it just makes you want to work even harder to, to make it, you know, to make it happen. So yeah, totally. so that's really, really humbling. Yeah. Yeah. And what, one last question, if you were to give any advice to your 21 year old self, what would it be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't know that that's a true. I, 
it's one of those ones where, well, if you tell yourself something, it maybe maybe stuff will go differently. But I, yeah. I, the only thing I could the only thing I could think that would be kind of uh, benign and useful would be do more yoga. Yeah, I wish I'd done I'd done more yoga yeah. back then. That would that would help. But uh, but yeah, you know, I I always wish I'd I'd been more uh, more skilled in sort of computational approaches and you know been able to like you know throw together some code and things like that. But uh, but you know it's. Uh, yeah, I think everything's everything's going all right. It's working out. Yeah, no, totally. And I, um, I, I actually nowadays I'm just like I have to make a concerted effort to to actually stretch. And yeah. after being hunched over at a computer, you know, That's all right. day, it's uh, yeah. it's important, to, you know, to, yeah. to to not lose sight of your you know general physical well being as well. Uh, oh, but- it's- it's super important. I mean, like, I, I can't, I mean, that's a, we haven't got chance to sort of touch on that, but like, you know, as far, as far as like, you know, dealing with the stress and the, you know, definitely looking after your, you know, your body as, as part of being an entrepreneur and looking after your, your, your cardiovascular and your, you know, your mental health. I mean, these are, these are really important things that people don't, you know, tend to talk about enough, but, um, you know, I would say that's, that's often, you know, that's part of that puzzle, you know, is it's definitely making sure you're um, physically and mentally kind of, you know, in shape to deal with the the ups and the downs. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, I, I have the exact, you know, you entrepreneurship on paper kind of looks like a, just a purely cerebral exercise, but it's yeah. very physical. Like it, it's very physical. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, if you don't, if you don't take care of your body, you know, you won't be able to show up to, yeah. you know, yeah. to, to work. Um, so yeah. I've, you know, I, I'm the same, like trying to try my best <laughs> to, to not, to, you know, to not be a kind of, to, to just have atrophy <laughs> and yeah. just, you know, wither away. Um, but James, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. Oh, great. Well, yeah. Thanks for having me on it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really always very great talking with you. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, asking me to be a part of it. I'm looking forward to uh, whoever comes next. I'm going to be tuning in. Yeah, and I, I'm so grateful that we were, we were able to, you know, to do this and also to be able to work with Fina Vista. So, you know, thanks yeah. again. Um, you yeah. Know, and, and maybe next time we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll do another deep dive on other aspects of company building. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks, John. That's all for today's episode of the Biotech Startups Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our three-part series with James Evans. Be sure to tune into our next series where we will be chatting with Alok Tai, founder and CEO of Vibe Bio. Vibe Bio is focused on building a community of patients, scientists, and partners that work to identify promising treatments for overlooked diseases while financing them in innovative ways. Prior to Vibe Bio, Alex started and ran several life science focused software companies, including Ignite, TetraScience, and PreScouter. Before his time in software, he was an academic scientist working at Harvard, Northwestern, and Cornell. His scientific and commercial experience experience, along with a tech-focused mindset, means that he can offer unique insights that all founders can benefit from hearing. The Biotech Startups Podcast is brought to you by Exceda. Don't want to miss an episode? Make sure to search for Biotech Startups Podcast in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, and click subscribe. To learn more about our leasing program, visit our website www.excedr.com. We provide research labs with equipment leases on founder-friendly terms to support a path to exceptional outcomes. On behalf of the team here at Exceda, thanks for listening.